From Nashville, Tennessee, Inside the Noise Podcast with your host, Jenna Heidman. Here's Jenna. Well, hey, everybody. We're back Inside the Noise. I'm I have Jenna. <laughs> I'm Jenna. And we have Chris Bandy with us. What's up, y'all? Hey, Chris. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well. Good. Doing well. Staying cool in here. Yeah, yeah. better than outside. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Well, okay. Jenna, what do we got so far? Well, we're going to make some noise for each other. <laughs> okay. I don't think I sent this. All right. So we have a segment. We're trying it out. So all right. So we over to Inside the Noise, where we tell us something good, and then we all clap and make some noise for each other. <laughs> all right. Like snaps. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So who wants to go first? Do you want me to go first? I would love for you to go first. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it happened today. My mom is a huge country fanatic. I feel like she should live here because she tells me more about this city than I know. Um, but we found out for like a s- snippet of it that we are in the new Kenny Chesney Get Along music video. Wow. Because I went to his opening show in Tampa since my family's all there. So my sister's best friend posted a picture of all of us, and we're just line dancing like there you go, you're famous. Like tailgating. So I'm that like, is awesome. Pretty cool. That is really cool. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Wow. Some noise. They um so this is personal, right? Yes. Okay, yes. I I just celebrated my second anniversary with my girlfriend. Yay. Yay. Yeah. What'd you guys do? Yeah. We went to New York for the weekend. Oh, wow. that's fun. We went to New York and this was my first time. She had been but just passing through. <clears throat> I think she went and then hopped on a train in New Jersey to see Kenny Chesney nice. for the Brothers Crazy. of the Sun tour Love a few it. years ago. So this was our first time, like, actually doing New York. Doing New York, and I fell in love. I I had been in love with her, but I fell in love with the city. <laughs> Two years ago, uh, I fell in love. I, I, I fell I in love you with told the her that city. A year ago. <laughs> um, it is amazing. New York is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Have I think it's been? too fast paced for been. me. Never been. Never been? Never been to New York. I would highly recommend it. You should go. It is cool. Is it? During it, Christmas time, too, it's really neat. See, we're already starting to plan, like, our second yes. trip back, and I think we're going to go around the holidays. Yeah, but it was to. It wasn't as fast-paced as I was expecting. Okay. Like, I was expecting people to, like, run me over yeah. and be very, very rude, but they it was fine. fine. It's like Broadway, just uh, all the time. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not Sometimes that bad. Sometimes that can be a lot, but... <laughs> yes, it can. <laughs> Depends on Depends. where you go. Depends on how you Broadway play. on, like, a Saturday, not, like, CMA Fest. Oh, Okay. Yeah, so not too bad. Far worse. Not too bad. (laughs) Still a little rough. Yeah. What about you, Jenna? Well, I started working out of a out of a co working space, and it's the most magical thing in the whole world. What is a co working space? (laughs) I don't know. I'm obsessed with that. I've I've told Courtney. So like the WeWork? (laughs) Yes. Okay. It's not WeWork. It's a different one. And I've met so many people in three days, and everyone wants to talk to you, and they bring you snacks. (laughs) So do you have like your own little cubby? No, I don't. Okay. They have, like, the cubbies are really expensive. Uh. <laughs> are you in, like, the break room? Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> I thought you were in a cubby this whole time. Oh, no, no, no. I sit at this nice long table with, like, other people. Oh. And we all just sit there and work all day. And then if you want to talk to someone, you say, hey. <laughs> okay. Where is it? In East Nashville. Okay. So I feel very creative because it's there East you Nashville. Go. Nice. But I've really enjoyed it. And they're great. And I'm excited to work there. Yay. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That's been my high of the week. That's so exciting. It is. Proud Very of you. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I prepped for this show there yesterday. There you go. Yeah. I've been doing all my work there. So that was pretty good for a guinea pig segment, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, did you feel good about it? I felt great. <laughs> How about yourself? I feel, yeah, I feel good. Good. I feel like we learned something about each other. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Very cool. All right, cool. So then <laughs> Courtney's going to give us our Courtney cast. All right. Yay. Um, I'm a creeper. Um, not in, like in the weird way of like stalking people. Yeah, just through Instagram, you know. Yes, I have no <laughs> idea. Where you Do you live. get like very, very deep? No, not necessarily. It's just like Instagram stories, like what happens like currently. I okay. try to stay up to date with things and not go so far back. Okay. <laughs> I don't do that that often. Okay, so this is my little Courtney segment. Um, I found this funny. Kelsey Ballerini's car got towed while out on the road. So she was out on I tour. Saw that. She came back and she was like, My car got towed. I saw and that. And I'm like, See, they're people too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I've recently been stalking Josh Kerr and Taylor Dye's new relationship. They went to Bora Bora. Wow. <laughs> That's a big step for them. They have I haven't been together wow. for very long. That's um, a big trip. Bora Bora. That's like that's, one of my bucket lists. Yeah, I've never been, I've but never been either. I would love to go. I've seen amazing pictures, like the 
little tiki huts on yeah. the water that you can just like wake up and I know I'd love to sit there and wake up in a cabana and just cabana. look out to the water and just be like yeah this is life <laughs> yeah that'd be <laughs> that'd be nice that'd be solid goals <laughs> goals <laughs> um I love Jackie Lee, and so his story coming out oh, yeah. with his cancer story really got all the feels yes. for me. Yes, from all um, of Nashville, too. All of Everyone Nashville, yeah. Everybody, support. yeah. I thought I had screenshotted something and sent it to you, but I didn't, but there was really funny comments that him and someone else were well, making back and forth. Did you I? told me about it, and then I was like, what are you talking about? And I was at work, so I couldn't look oh, yeah. at it at the time, and then I read it, and I, like, almost bawled, because I'm like, that's just so sad, you know, he went through his mom dying right. of cancer, and so, I, and I think that's why I love country music so much, is because they, ha- you, the unity is so good, Very I love so. it, um, and then my last one, creeping is Lewis Bryce's girlfriend is recovering Cracked from a, knee. yes, What'd 33 do? stitches, so they were, they, in Key were West. they were at the Singer-Songwriter Festival, oh. And she was running. I think around their around Airbnb the house? or yeah. house or whatever. And oh, I gosh. think there was a plank she missing. She didn't know that, I think. Because it was it at night. I think it was at night. And yeah. In Key West. You're, yeah. You're having a good time. You're having a really yeah. good time. Really not, it, anywhere you are, you're not really expecting yeah. your deck to be missing a board, right? Yeah, but I... I cringed when I saw those images. I love looking at that stuff. I didn't it's see weird. Them. No. But like he took pictures of the before and after and like you can just see like her bone Ooh. and the muscles and ugh, but anyways um wish her well yes because, oh speedy recovery yeah for real i think i read today that she tore her acl and meniscus oh, or no. mcl one of the oh, she tore two oh, things wow. in me when it happened ugh. so that's t- that's hard yeah i mean i hate needles so like getting 33 stitches in there no Ooh. no, no. But anyways, that's that's the corn cast. cast. There we go. I'd creep on you, but you don't post that. But much, you did creep right? on him. Oh, I know. I need to pick it up. Shh. I mean, I did creep <laughs> on him. I did tell him to have you cut your hair recently. Yeah. <laughs> so cut, I knew that yeah. happened. Yep. <laughs> cut the hair. Donated uh, ten or eleven inches. Um, and it was very nerve wracking. Very nerve wracking. I didn't know what I was going to I forgot what I looked like with short hair. So I Aww. hope it doesn't look too bad. It does not. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> You're I, a good boy. Thank so. you. I was saying earlier that, that I'm now having to get used to bad hair days because before I could just throw it in a bun and yeah. put a hat on top of it, and now it's now I have to it's live with gone. it. all gone. And yeah. gel. Like, I have to now go buy what is gel? pomade okay. and hairspray. <laughs> Question. And, random thought. Do you think the man bun will be like the mullet? Like, it'll be a really bad hair. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Like, He's like, I oh, have been rocking this I forever. hope not. Oh, my goodness. I rocked that man for eight, I years. That for eight years. I thought, about, I, I thought about cutting it into a mullet for, like, a day. Oh, that would have been funny. Would but been so then funny. I couldn't that have donated awesome. it, so. Um, but do you I think your to, girlfriend have, would have appreciated ooh, that? Not at all. You could have, like, yeah. a little not rat for tail. for a second. Yeah. See? Was that popular when you were in, like, grade school? There was kids in my grade school that had, like, a little rat tail. Oh, gosh. There was one kid so down the street, Elgin. Elgin. Elgin down the street. Wait, sounds like you'd have a rat tail. We used to, we used to, uh, sounds like you would have a rat tail, right? Elgin. Elgin. He had a rat tail. And I remember thinking I never want a rat tail. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> nasty. Like, no. Uh, yeah, not attractive. No, not at That's all. That's a no. That's funny. Okay. Well. Good job, Court. I thanks. enjoyed that. That was great. Yeah. So, everyone always loves it. You know. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were going to get like here. real dishy. No, oh, no, I don't no, get no. that dishy. Okay. It's just like a little up, news update. Yeah. Like new, Nashville gossip? news update. You know, like, I don't think a lot of people sit on Instagram as much as I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be at work, and I have so much to do, but I have, Creep. I'm like ADD where, like, I just sit at my phone, and I'm like, I've wasted about an hour of my life, so. But did you enjoy doing it? Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. wasted. <laughs> she really loves it. It would have been wasted if you were actually working and you hated it, right? That's true. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Crunching yeah. numbers, that's never joy. fun. No, it's not. Mm. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> All right, well, that was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Courtney. You're welcome. Let's get to Chris now. <laughs> Let's get to me. Yeah. All right, Chris. What's up? <laughs> Tell us about yourself, like, for people who don't know you. Give us a little I'm, I'm Chris Bandy. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I've been in Nashville for just celebrating my fifth anniversary here. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's a long time. That's a long yeah. time. That's, You've been here for five, I've been right? here for five years, too. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so I, it's the same amount of time that I spent in college. So 
Yes, it's <laughs> Me too. It's the next, uh, the next time I got to figure out what I'm going to try to do with my life now. Um, but I moved here um, from Oxford, Mississippi, where I went to school. And they told me that there weren't any musicians in town, so I figured I'd stand out. Moved to oh. Nashville. They lied to you. <laughs> no, I'm that just was, that was that a lie? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I was joking. Um, <laughs> yeah, when I was in college, I kind of figured out that you got a free bar tab if you played music. That's true. So, I read that on your website. See? <laughs> I think we need to start playing music, Courtney. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, when, when you start playing music, they give you a free bar tab. That's awesome. Um, and when you're in college, that goes a long way. Yeah. So uh, I would play Monday through Saturday, and my school, my where I went to school, they didn't serve alcohol on Sunday, so we took Sundays off. Um, that was your recovery day. That was that was yeah. the recovery day. But, um, I had two roommates at the time, and one of them sold merch for me, but we didn't have any merch, and uh, <laughs> the other one was my manager, so they got to drink for free as well. Like, yeah, I'm played. selling merch. What do you have? Exactly. Uh, Chris is right there. You have an autograph? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want his shirt? <laughs> so we uh, we started playing, and from there we uh, would do fraternity parties, and we'd go play at fraternities in Starkville, Mississippi, which is where Mississippi State is, mm-hmm. yeah. and um, got down to Atlanta. I'd go back up to St. Louis and play and just try to make a little bit of money, and, you know, at 21 – Getting paid two hundred dollars and having a free bar tab is pretty awesome. Good. Yeah, because, legit. Yeah, in in Mississippi, um, I think my rent was like two hundred dollars. What? So, hell yeah! God, I need to move there. Move? <laughs> so I got to. Uh, There's free bar tabs and cheap rent. Exactly. Yeah, free I was bar tabs. Say, so do you have that here? Because like, where are you playing next? <laughs> I think. I'm just kidding. Tootsie's gives free bar tabs, right? Does it? I think so. I have to ask Casey about that. I think it, I think Broadway you can you can drink down there, but um. But yeah, decided that uh, music was what I wanted to do at a at a very early age. Um, didn't know how to go about it. Mm. I thought maybe you'd be playing one day, and Scott Brachetta's cousin's grandma's mom's friend would be in there and be like, yes, "Call up yeah. Scott and be like, hey, I found your next thing.'" Mm. Um, and I quickly learned that that's not how it happens. Mm. Yeah. Um, so. I got a little band together, and we started playing out and, again, playing for $200 and paying my band anything that I could. And I was fortunate enough that a kid that I went to college, the kid that I went to Ole Miss with, moved up to Nashville about the same time as I did, and he started working at a booking agency in town. Mm -hmm. Um, And we got connected through a friend, and he was like, man, when are you playing in town next. I want to come out and see you. And we were playing like a week later and he came out and from there we started this, you know, friendship and he started throwing me shows kind of um, under the table, not commissioning or anything. And we went down to Athens, Georgia to play. We'd go to South Carolina and play. And I think one of the dumbest things I did was um, we had a $200 show and I went out and bought a trailer because... <laughs> That's what smart people do because you need to get the band there somehow, right? Oh, my gosh. And so uh, I, love it. I figured, you know, I'm putting all my eggs in this basket. So it's mm-hmm. got to – at some point I'm going to need a trailer. Yeah, and, you uh, might as well pull the trigger now. Exactly. Yeah. So um, through that friendship, we actually did start working together. And I got this little band together. And it's kind of funny when you are first starting out, and I'll use Nashville as a uh, – as a reference, because we all know, we're familiar with the area, mm-hmm. they'll be like, all right, the guy who owns the big bar that you want to play in Nashville also has this really, really small, crappy bar that you're going to have to play in mm. Murfreesboro. Yeah. Ugh. So if he likes you when you play in Murfreesboro, then he's That's going to have you back yeah. on maybe like a Friday or Saturday at his big bar. Right. Um, so we spent the first year kind of in, in a Tahoe with a trailer with five, four or five guys, depending on the weekend, going and playing in the small, crappy bars for as little oh. money as you think that they could pay you, um, <laughs> and playing for four hours and leaving hoping that they, they liked it, and we were lucky enough that they would call. 
that night or the next day saying, you know, when's he available again? We want to get him back. And so we'd go to their, their nice bar. But it was, it was about a year of that and trying to just, you know, stay as positive as you can and keep your head yeah. down and, and grind it out and, and woodshed and, and, uh, it led to better gigs and mm -hmm. a little bit more money and, and, uh, the best part was the gigs weren't four hours anymore. They yeah. cut down to That's three nice. hours, yeah. which That's was nice. nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then we, we got together and I, I had been writing the whole time and, um, I got fortunate that I met up with a songwriter, producer by the name of Jason Massey, who's in town, and he actually mm -hmm. produces Kelsey. Um, and we started writing together, and we were really vibing off each other, and and we decided, hey, let's see if we can do something here. And and um, we wrote a song called Man Enough Now that we wanted to put out on Spotify and iTunes and just as mm -hmm. a kind of introduction to who I am and and the music that I wanted to play and who I was going to be. And, um, we put it out and I thought nobody would ever hear it. And, um, it started doing really well. And I think, you know, Spotify was still, I didn't know how to track or, or mm -hmm. data mine or really know anything about streams or anything like that. And so I was looking and we were getting about 5,000 streams a day and, and I'm, thinking i don't is that good is what yeah, like what yeah, are, what's supposed to be like what's supposed to happen here and uh found out that it was very good, very good. Yes. and so they moved it to a playlist and from that playlist it started doing very very well that they moved it to another playlist um and on that playlist it started doing even better and then ultimately they added it to um the hot country playlist nice. and um yeah, we just celebrated 40 million streams on it. That's so crazy. It was awesome. insane. A song that I thought nobody would ever hear, and, yeah, and now 40 million, 40 million people That's have, like have heard it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm a few. But yeah, so we're, um, we've are we been in the studio. We've been recording some new stuff, and we're excited to get it out, and um, hoping and praying that it that people like it and, and uh, listen to it and receive it as well as they did, you know, Man Enough Now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we actually uh, went to your show at Exit In. We did. I, yep. I was told that. Thank you so much. There. Thank yeah. you so yeah, much for coming out. Yeah. yeah. That, that was, was my first time seeing you, but before that, I didn't know who you were until Casey said, I've got a buddy, Chris Bandy. And then I was laughing earlier when you were like, it's not Brandy, it's Bandy. <laughs> and so there was what, I don't know what we were talking I said, doing. who's this Chris Brandy person? <laughs> and then Courtney, and Jenna goes, Bandy, it's Bandy. And I'm like, Oh crap! Why? Why did I say? Like, why do people put an R there? I don't know, just, but it's not the first time that that has happened. That's weird. I bet you're gonna show up at shows. We've like on the like sign, Chris Brandy. That has happened yeah. several <laughs> times. Tearing down the R. Several times we've shown up. Yeah, and it's either written in chalk or on the marquee or or somewhere. Yeah. yeah, Chris Brandy. But hey, you know what? There are worse things that happen. There that's true. It's true. Worse. <laughs> it worse. But yeah, that was an awesome show. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, that one was was crazy too. I, my parents were in town and we were we were really excited and I thought Aww. we were going to walk out and it was just going to be my parents. Oh no. Crickets and my parents, but we were <laughs> that that blew me away that that you know so many friends came out to support me mm -hmm. and yeah. it was awesome. We had a blast there. So Exit in is is always awesome. That was our <clears throat> I think our third time playing it. So it's been yeah. nice. it's been awesome. I yeah. love it there. That was my first time being at Exit In. That's actually. crazy. Really? So thank you for giving me my first time. Yes. Wow. Thank what you for memory. coming. What a memory. What a great memory. Thank you so much. We had no idea Jer was there either. We were like, Jer no, was there. Joey you. was there. <laughs> yeah. We're I'm going to have to get on to Casey. We met Joey that night. And that's okay. how we met him. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I'm have to, I'm we tried to, to get Casey to come with us. Casey, why well, he wasn't there. Oh, that's true. We did. We said, we're going to go see your friend, and you're not even coming with us. I don't know what he was doing. What kind of friend is that? Yeah, what kind of friend is that? Casey? Give him crap later. Yeah, Casey used to come out on the road with us um, so quite I went a few times. Way far back on your Instagram, and I saw your guys' old show than posters, oh, yeah. and I was like, "Chris and Casey used to make show posters." <laughs> yeah, I think Casey made those show posters. Aww. He was. Uh, and I was like, "You guys are really excited," and the next one was like, "Show canceled." canceled. <laughs> that one, and I think no. that was. I think yeah. that might have been like the only show that I've ever canceled, and I would have made it, but I had my mom and dad. Like it's snowing up here. It's really bad. I think they got like an inch of snow. <laughs> and it was <laughs> that's not that bad. They, but, no, not at all. No. But they said that it was gonna ice over and freezing yeah. rain and all this stuff. And my parents were like, Maybe you should just 
maybe you should cancel. And I remember, because that was, like, going to be my first ever full band show. Oh, wow. No. In, I'm sorry, back in St. Louis. Yeah, like, my homecoming, Louis, first ever full band show. And I was like, Aww. we're going to show them. Like, this is it. We used to play all these places acoustic yeah. and stuff. And we're coming back, and this is going to be a great intro. Canceled. 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 <laughs> that sucked. But we got to go back, and that led to a great show story um, that I guess I'm going to have to I now say, yeah, go yeah, into. Yeah, like it up. Um, <laughs> so we, the night before we had played in Columbia, Missouri, which is like an hour and a half is where Mizzou is. Mm-hmm. Um, and my guitarist, Matt Ferranti, <gasps> okay. um, who I think okay. you talked about in Joey's. He's coming up soon on the awesome. podcast. Yep, awesome. He'll be on soon. So you'll have to, to bring this up. Uh, Matt left his guitar in Columbia, Missouri. And so we get to oh, no. the oh, gig, no. and I'm excited. I'm like, this is my first yeah. full band show back in St. Louis. And Matt walks up to me, and he's like, we have a problem. And I kind of laughed. I was like, what? And he just hands me his guitar case, and it's empty. And oh, I think yeah. that might have been the mm. most mad I had ever been in my, at the time, 25, 26 years of life. Mm-hmm. Um, but calm down. We went to a guitar store, and we were calling guitar stores, like, can we rent something? Can we do something? Like, please just help us out. We'll return it tomorrow. How much time did you have of the show starting This was, we were, sound check. Oh. 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 We were showing up to sound check. Yeah. And um, so, we're calling around, and everything's closed. Oh, gosh. Because it's Saturday, I guess, music stores close early on Saturdays. Yeah. And um, we called a few, and we were like, can we rent? Can we do something? And these people were like... You don't want to rent the guitars that we have to rent. Trust me. At least you're honest about not it. Not <laughs> good. They're like, it's not going to sound good. You don't want to rent this guitar. So, yeah. ultimately, we talked one of these guitar shops into staying open a little bit later, and we ran up there, grabbed the best guitar that they had, which was like a three hundred dollar guitar, and I was like, if I pay cash and buy it right now, can you? Just hook me up with a discount, please. So they did. They threw in a, a case, which Aww. really helped us out <laughs> at the nice. time. And I still use that guitar now. That's awesome. Um, but so we get there. I'm thinking, all right, crisis averted. We're good to go. We're going right. to play. It's going to be a good show. Yeah. First song goes great. Awesome. Second song, my drummer puts his drumstick through the snare. No. <laughs> so... <laughs> We had already rehearsed that I was going to do a few songs acoustic towards the end of the show. We had to bump them up. Be, yeah. Um, and I'm like, all right, fine. He has another snare in the trailer. It's going to be okay. I get to like my fourth acoustic song. Hey, where's my band? And I'm like, where in the world are these guys? So I'm playing and I'm finishing. And all of a sudden my drummer walks up with the keys. And he had snapped the key oh in the lock <laughs> of the trailer. That's terrible. And again, I have a mini heart attack and yeah. don't know what I'm going to do. And I think Casey saved the day. Oh, here you go. Yay, I Casey think, saved the day. So that makes up for him not showing up to the exit in show. Um, <laughs> good thing he had that one in his back pocket. He's a good friend. He, I think he like just started punching the lock or something and it opened up. <laughs> and we got the snare. So strong. And, right? <laughs> Strong man. Such a strong out. man. Um, <laughs> we got we got the snare, came back out and finished the show. Nice. But that was, and this happened like our second weekend as a band. Wow. And so I figured, you know what? If we could overcome that, heck yeah, we're getting through it. We're we're good. Yeah. Adversity. Yeah, I like it. We're 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 fine. But yeah, that was Here a. You uh, are now. Whew. <laughs> that was a night. That was an interesting Pray night. Pray to God that doesn't happen again. <laughs> We actually have broken several keys in locks. Aww. One was last summer in Manhattan, Kansas. <laughs> and that one was even worse because we hadn't even sound checked yet. And so we drove around Kansas for like two hours trying to find somebody that could. We were going to try to saw it off, do everything. Um, oh, no. And we called several locksmiths and they were like, yeah, we can't do it today. We can't do it. And finally, I was like, how much do I need to pay you to get this lock off of this trailer and the guy came out and cut yeah. it off, but it was no it's more been interesting. keys for you. I know, <laughs> no more. I know. 
<laughs> well, actually, I'm the only one who has not broken a key in the lock. Okay. Well, then, no more keys for your, your band. <laughs> I know. I, I, gotta, I, I need to babysit everybody all the time. <laughs> Well, do you want to play a song? I would love to play a song. Let me grab a guitar real quick. Make sure it's in tune. I actually... Is this the guitar that you picked up in St. Louis? This is not the guitar (laughs) that I picked up. This was not the guitar that I picked up. But I just noticed today... Oh, there's a dent. ...that I cracked it. Uh Uh-oh. So I'm going to have to... uh, I don't know. This was was like my first ever nice guitar purchase. Mm. Yeah. And this is like my baby. This has been every show. Oh. So it's kind of... And I know that it's going to get beat up, but it still hurts. It's just sad times. Very, yeah. very sad. One. <laughs> With that, I'll play a sad song, I guess. Okay. So this Jenna song. I love sad songs. I really do. So if you were at the Exit In show, I played this song acoustic, um, like I'm going to do tonight. It's called That's Why I Don't Drink. And it's about you know, a person that you would always call when you get drunk and you just can't really get away from them and you're always thinking about them so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so this is a song from the guy's perspective oh, okay. and he said he's sick of breaking their heart because yeah. every time he does every time he gets drunk he just calls them up so yeah. Yeah. he's willing to give a, give up drinking because he's sick of hurting this girl so mm-hmm. this is called that's why I don't drink Thank 
Thank you. Yay, Chris. Very depressing <laughs> song, right? So depressing. <laughs> well, have, so have you been in that situation, like what you were saying before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think everybody has, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably still in that I'm just still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I'm out of it now. Let's not talk about it, yeah, though. Yeah, <laughs> I wrote that song a while ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think I still sometimes... But. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when you're like, I shouldn't drink, and then I Cheers, looked at Jenna and I said, well, we yeah. shouldn't. <laughs> but oh, here, here we are. Well, your glass is almost empty. You have to refill. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we can refill. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a terrible influence. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm lucky there's no tequila here, though. So, that's... Are you a Marks man? Um, no. <laughs> I don't drink margaritas. What? I know. Just straight tequila? Just straight tequila. Who are you? Dan That's... and Shay. <laughs> Both of them. I don't, I, so, it's going to sound really, really old of me, but margaritas give me heartburn. I'm 28. So, you're making me feel old now. Well, do margaritas give you heartburn? No. Then you're young. <laughs> then you're I young. I a really bad hangover. See? So, I think it's like the lime juice. <laughs> it looks like a porcupine. uh <laughs> See, what did I say? Bad hair days. It's, I, I don't know what to do with it yet. Still trying to figure out. When they cut it, <laughs> when she cut it, she said that since it was pulled back for so long, like right. these sides, I kind of have like the Ace Ventura thing going on. Oh, because right. they, yeah. So Looking they good. said that the second cut usually is better. When's that okay. one coming? <laughs> she Ouch. said it doesn't look good. Ouch. I'm going to hide him in. I'm going to cry oh, now. Man. Okay, let's <laughs> are, 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 are we done? <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, if you left, that would be terrible. First of all, you are super talented. Well, thank you so like, much. I appreciate it. I mean, there's thank so much talent much. in Nashville, but like, I, everyone has their unique, different voice, and yours is just like, I'm like melting so over much. here. I'm like, but is it hot in here? I don't know. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Of course, yeah. Do you have a, um, is there music history in your family or like did this just pick up i th- my uncle used to sing um in choir and stuff um i think my dad did as well but nothing my dad tried to teach me how to play guitar one time and uh i wasn't very good at listening as a child mm-hmm. so uh, <laughs> i think he got annoyed and, and kind of stopped but um and nobody they love music my mom Listened to country music, yeah. mm-hmm. and my dad listened to pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. So my dad would play Bruce Springsteen to the Cranberries to um, Fine Young Cannibals and just Tracy Chapman. Any, I grew up, I was raised in the 90s, so 90s music was king, but then he also used to play Prince and mm-hmm. yeah. just the oldies as well. Um, and I remember I was like, the, I had a blue Walkman. And I used to carry around a Prince CD, and I feel like I was the only second grader that like oh my gosh. listened to Prince. <laughs> That's funny. And I knew like every word by heart, which was You're like, how do you know all these words? Really, yeah, it was really <laughs> weird um, as a, a second grader listening to Prince. Yeah. Um, thinking back now, I was like, oh, that's so strange. Weird. Why wasn't I listening to like Kids Bopper? Yeah. <laughs> now <laughs> music really what? twelve. <laughs> what do you listen to now? Everything. Yeah. Um, I just watched a John Mayer documentary I'm last obsessed. night. So I've literally all day been just listening to John Mayer. What's your favorite John Mayer song? Album? Song? Song. <sighs> Comfortable. Okay. Comfortable is probably always just going to be my favorite. Uh, in Your Atmosphere as well. Mm-hmm. Have you been to a John Mayer show? Several. Oh. Several. I wanted to go. I didn't go. Really? You like, have to go. He came to Nashville like last year. So he, um, I went to that one. Did with, you? Um, <sighs> they were, um, the night game was opening up. Okay. Who are awesome as well, if mm-hmm. you've not heard of them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's the lead singer from Boys Like Girls. Oh, yeah. Sing us little Boys Like Girls. <laughs> Sing us? Oh, my goodness. Put uh, you on the spot. Oh, shit. Oh, well, shoot. Um, <laughs> well, hero, hero, heroin, right? That was one. Thunder was, I can't even remember. Yeah, how just come on. I, I don't even remember it. how they go. Oh, um, oh this is terrible. I know. <laughs> I should have been prepared for that. I shouldn't have even brought up the night game. Jeez. But I read that um, you were also into, like, the rock, like, Blink-182. Oh, yeah. So, so did you so go okay. through a phase of your life I've where you dressed like that? A lot oh, of yeah. phases. I see I've, that. I've gone through a lot of phases. I see that. Um, 
I used to snowboard and skateboard and went through like a Fallout Boy, which I thought was like real punk of me. Oh yeah, to listen mm-hmm. to like Fallout Boy and and uh, Good Charlotte before they sold out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I grew up. So my mom listened to country, my dad listened to rock, and then when I wanted to get away from like anything that they listened to because it wasn't cool, <laughs> I went through my punk phase and Blink One Eighty Two and yeah. and Good Charlotte. And yes, all that's Warp Tour. Went yep. to like Jenna four went years of Warp Tour. Oh, <laughs> See. Yeah, I Taking did. Back Sunday, who I heard is coming to Ascend, I think. Are they? Oh. I went through that phase and I got my head pierced. I had a dermal on my head. I creeped hard your on her pierced? one day. I had my head pierced. You know, like when dermals were a thing? I have no idea what a dermal is. So they like... Drill it in They you. like put a hole... And I still have a scar right here because it was like by my eye. Because you had a hole in your head. <laughs> that would make sense. It was the dumbest thing ever. I had a... Yeah, a derma. It's like a little thing and they like insert it in your skin and they like screw a little like jewel on top. So it looks like I had like a little like blingy thing on my head holy cow do they still do that i don't think many people do people use no. it on their chest yeah i see that a lot it's... i now i know but what I you're talking about my head okay because it was a thing too yeah. and at least it's not a face tat yeah at least it wasn't a tattoo oh, like I, I got it removed i got my first job and they're like hey you can't have face piercings i'm like oh this is life <laughs> what kind of job is this <laughs> kind of a face, face piercing well, then i quit <laughs> like, well, i'm out <laughs> yeah terrible times wow. in my life. Yeah, I got to see great photos of that. One day, like I said, when I'm bored at work or I don't feel like working sometimes, she creeps. I creeped on Jenna hardcore and I was like, look think- at you over here. She had like Dark bangs. hair with bangs. Like the Avril Lavigne and, look? And like, yep, I had yes. You know when, like, it was you wear the cool. suspenders? No, but it was cool to part your hair, like, way over here. Like, yeah. All this, and, like, you had the bangs <laughs> that came all the way across. I had feathers in my hair and I had piercing. <laughs> Oh, All right, cool. and then it went from that to like the other extreme of like she was a country girl with her country with her cowboy <laughs> boots on, wow, and her belt with her okay. dress. And I went through some really oh. terrible. Was like a summer apart. Yeah, probably like a summer apart. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's a big change. Yeah, yeah, it was probably like my senior year and then like my first year of college. I kept sending them to her, and she was, was so like, that is "Courtney, a big can change. you please work?" I'm like, "No, this is so entertaining." <laughs> I'm like, "Get to work." Did people think it was weird? Like when you came back? No. After your freshman year. And your friends that knew you as, like, no. Avril, you come back <laughs> looking like Avril Gentry. I'm like, hey, y'all. No. What's up, y'all? No, 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 no. They didn't. Um, yeah, it wasn't, like, that drastic. Courtney's being a little dramatic. Okay. No, it really, like, I mean, when you see this in a day, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Like, here's one extreme of <laughs> rock, and here's another one of country. So, you know. Just hey, many hats. But, yeah, many hats, yeah. Many hats. Many hats. But... Then I, yeah, I went through my punk phase. See, everyone um, does it. I was in a, but then I got out of it and mm. listened to, it, that's when I picked up the acoustic guitar mm. um, and listened to John Mayer, Matt Nathanson, Dave Matthews, Dispatch, Jack John, and I went through like this whole phase because I realized that girls like the acoustic guitar mm, as yeah. opposed to like the heavy metal, <laughs> it's a true punk, story. Yeah. power chord stuff, so... Um, yeah, I picked up the acoustic guitar and was trying to learn any John Mayer, Dave Matthews song that I could. Um, and then, I guess, like, my sophomore year of high school, sophomore or junior year of high school, I had a kid that used to take me to school um, and then home from football practice, and he listened to country. And it was, like, Brad Paisley and Tim McGraw and Kenny Chesney, and I was mm-hmm. like, these songs are good. Yeah. 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 These are some good songs. It was, like, Red Rag Top and, yeah. and uh, yeah, Summertime. And um, uh, could go on for Kenny, right? <laughs> I uh, love him. Um, shoot, I got some big news. Bank finally came through, and I'm holding the keys too. What's the, the name tires. of that song? Mud, Mud on the tires. Mud on the tires. That I fell in love with as well. So I was like, all right, you know what? Maybe my mom did have a good taste in music. Maybe <laughs> maybe country isn't so bad after all. And then from like my sophomore junior year of high school to 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 college through college, I went to school like I said in Mississippi, so it was country, country as well. Um, I was listening to country. We used to go see Luke Bryan when he was playing with for two hundred people. Mm. Um, Eric Church was coming up when I was a freshman in college. Um, Corey Smith. So we used to go to all these you know country concerts, and that's when I started learning country songs on guitar and playing country and and writing country songs and and. Um, you know, focusing more on lyrics as opposed to just saying whatever you wanted that sounded good, which you mm-hmm. could get away with mm-hmm. in a lot of other genres. But I loved the storytelling and how 
how personal it could be and how many people could relate to certain situations and certain songs. Um, and that's what really drew me to country. And then, yeah, moved up to Nashville and kind of hit it head on and been doing it ever since. But now, your original question, in a very roundabout <laughs> way, what I listen to now. Um, just listening. <laughs> I listen to literally everything. Do you know John Bellion? No. no. John Bellion is phenomenal. Um, Chance the Rapper. Okay. Love Chance. I love, still love country music. Um, I think my car is always on Sirius XM the highway. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but Spotify is amazing as well Spotify. for... Like, just the new, like, your recommended songs are always on point. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, discovering new mm-hmm. artists and new songs that... And some of these artists are no one's ever heard of, uh-huh. but the songs are so great. So and Spotify good. gives musicians such a platform, independent musicians, such a platform to be discovered that's amazing. Mm-hmm. So... um I just, yeah, listen to my, you know, di- weekly discovery on Spotify yeah. and just put it on and listen to songs. And, um, yeah, I listen to, I'm pretty versatile when it comes to what I'm listening to on a daily basis. But, yeah, today's been full of, of John Mayer, old and new. <laughs> His new song is phenomenal as well. Oh, the one, did he just fall out? One Night. I haven't listened to it yet. I'm not a real he fan. He just put out a music video for it today. <laughs> I'm not a real fan. He put out a music video really? for it today that is hysterical if you get a chance to watch it. Do you follow his tweets? I do. His tweets are funny. Well, no, I do not follow. I don't tweet. I, well, I, don't, well, I have a Twitter. I have one too and I don't tweet, but I, I sometimes will read John Mayer's tweets. So do you follow him on Instagram? <laughs> no. His stories are, are funny. hilarious. His, I think he's probably better than some of the meme accounts. Yeah. In the world, I'm just start following. Yeah. They are yeah. phenomenal. Okay, good to know. Chris, you want to play us another song? I will play you another song. <laughs> so, I'll debut a song if that's okay. Yes. Wow, we have a debut. Awesome. I don't know um, how it's going to go, but we'll do it. Okay. Um, so I wrote this one, and we are in the process of recording it and stuff, and we've got some new music coming out soon that we're really excited about. But this is one of the songs, and it's called Rain Man. So, and everybody in Nashville is probably going to hate me when I put this out because, well, you'll see with the song, but it's <laughs> asking for a little bit of rain. And it's been rainy in Nashville for so long. Yeah, it's always great here. Gonna oh, yeah. Pretty much hate me, but let's see. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can fake my way through it, all right? <laughs> okay. right out of my eyes Just my luck The birds are singing in a cloud in sight That perfect forecast on the TV It's making it all too clear Blue skies outside just remind me That she ain't here So come on, Mr. Rain Man Can't take another sunny day, man If you've ever felt your heart break, man Then you'd understand the kind of shape I'm in I need the raindrops tapping on the top of my roof I need a storm clouds pouring out setting the mood Can't put it off another day, man I just need a little rain, man So come on, Mr. Rain, man I might be on a limb But I need A good excuse for staying in Cause if I don't start moving on They don't know if I ever will It's been 75 for two weeks straight Ain't that a little overkill So come on Mr. Rain Man Can't take another sunny day man If you've ever felt your heart break man Then you'd understand the kind of shape I'm in I need the raindrops tapping on the top of my roof I need a storm clouds pouring down setting the mood Can't put it off another day, man I just need a little rain, man So come on, Mr. Rain, man I need a sad song, I need a downpour 
I need the wind blowing open that screen door Out on the front porch, I need a good storm That's so what you waiting for Yeah, come on, Mr. Rain Man Can't take another sunny day, man If you've ever felt your heart break, man Then you'd understand the kind of shape I'm in I need the raindrops stepping on the top of my roof I need the storm clouds going down, setting the mood Can't put it off another day, man I just need a little rain, man So come on, Mr. Rain Man my way through it. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's funny that like you call that. that Rain Man, but like the beat of it makes me feel like I'm on an island. It's right? Like a happy sound. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we were going for. Yeah. But even if it's raining on the beach, it's still nice. See, that's what I was thinking. It's going to yeah. be a nice summer song, even if people yeah. don't listen to the words. When we've been playing it live, we just added it to the show. Um, I don't know if people are listening to the words, but they're grooving on it. So, yeah. so yeah. we're excited about it. Yeah. I like the beat of it. It's and just I th- like, meh. I think we wrote that um, on like the first <laughs> sunny day Let people in like her three or four it. weeks. <laughs> so and that was kind of ironic. Yeah. Wow. It was finally sunny and we wrote a rain song. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Missed the rain. Yeah, right? we literally went from winter to summertime. We, we did. did. Within seconds. We did. It rained a lot. Um, yeah. We just moved into a new house and we were trying to get sod installed and we could not get sod Mm -hmm. installed because it was Mm -hmm. raining i mean i think it literally rained from february to Mm -hmm. may yeah yeah it did every single day yeah it was miserable except for the one day that we wrote rain man (laughs) other than that i think it rained every single day Mm. but it's nice now yeah it's hot but yes we missed we we definitely missed a spring we did for sure for sure but we, I think we also kind of missed, we kind of missed fall. Yeah, it got, also oh. got really cold. Always. Because it went, like, and I was telling people. And it was, like, October, and I was still wearing, like, crop tops. Yeah. It was, like, 60 in December. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And I was telling people, I was, like, me bad just wait, it. because it's going to be cold. And it was still pretty cold until, like, April. It oh, was, for, yeah. Like, middle of April. Yeah. It yeah. Was. We'd have, like, one nice day, and then it'd be, like, freezing cold again. I think I saw on the news the other day that. It was the past two months were the coldest, like in recorded history, oh. and then this month is the hottest, one of the hottest oh, in recorded history. It's only gonna get hotter too. Oh yeah, with yeah. CMA Fest is gonna be wow. You're gonna sweat fest. Are you playing? What are you gonna CMA wear on fest? stage for CMA Fest? I don't know. Because you're I'm thinking like, like Daisy sweaty. Dukes. Yeah, um, I like it. <laughs> crop Daisy top. Dukes in a crop top. Crop top. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can loan you one. Or one of the. <laughs> I might pull like the undershirt through the through the neckline. <laughs> yes, it's Bandy, please. Not brandy. Yep. <laughs> not brandy. Bandy, not brandy. I need to. Uh, that's, I yeah. will make a shirt. That that's says actually that. a pretty good idea for some merch. <laughs> there, you there you go. That's some great. I get I a kickback, ten percent. Look at that. Yeah. All right. All right. That <laughs> is. I gotta make some money. <laughs> bandy, not brandy. That's great. Yeah. That is great. But yeah, um, I don't know. I feel like. So you are playing at CMA. We are Fest. playing CMA Fest. Awesome. We are playing Saturday, June 9th. At the Chevy Breakout stage at 1 p.m. Okay. Um, I hope that y'all come out. It'll be I fun. It'll be hot. hot. My mom um, will be here, so I'm going to be dragged everywhere she goes. So Ooh. will my parents. My parents Aww, will be in town. Nice. Um, I am going to Bonnaroo after we play. That's mm-hmm. insane. So i um, going to go see Eminem. Yes. Another influence. So, I'm going to Firefly Music Festival in Dover, Delaware this year, and Eminem and Lil Wayne are playing. Yeah. Whoa. That's yeah. awesome. I don't care about anyone else because I really don't know any <laughs> more that of that is music. Awesome. Yeah. But Little Wayne and Eminem are both yeah. on that. Are you going as a as a fan? Are you working? I'm are you covering it? Okay. But it's gonna be really cool. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is awesome. It's just random. I I didn't know that like Eminem played anymore. I didn't know so that I'm really Wayne excited was to see anymore either. Yeah. Lil Wayne? Because he was really cool when I was in high school. Yes. Yeah. But he's featured a lot. Is and he? he's okay. also he like I heard his like what are they called? Mixed or I don't producer? know. Producer? 
So no. he produces a lot as and well. And he puts out something like kind of on Mixed the download. Tapes? Yes. Yep. Someone was telling me about him. I'm like, I don't follow Little Way that so close. He, no, I don't. He owns like my high school years. Yeah. Young Money Music. Or Cash Money. I don't Cash know. Money, which Drake is a part of and um, Nicki okay. Minaj. So he's still, he's still in the game. He's still, he's still there. there. He's still in the game. All right. Had you been to Bonnaroo before? I went last year, and okay. it was awesome. Yeah. That's where I saw John Bellion for the first time. Okay. Um, okay. Saw Chance the Rapper, and that was phenomenal. Chance, if you ever get the chance <laughs> get to see Chance, <laughs> um, he is phenomenal live. And saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers as well. And I think the coolest thing, you, did you ever watch Entourage? No. no. Do you know Entourage? Yes. You know Adrian Grenier? Yes. Grenier? Yes. We sat right behind him. Stop. For He's the Red Hot Chili Peppers, <laughs> oh and I actually made his I made his uh, Instagram oh story, which I thought was pretty cool. That is legit. <laughs> that is legit. So <laughs> I was moment. I was standing behind him, and he kept trying to hit the like the button to turn the camera around, uh-huh. and he kept missing it. <laughs> so I like looked up at his phone, and it catches me like awkwardly looking at his phone. <laughs> And then like you're he, like I'm ruining the moment. He gives me like really. the rock sign to the phone, and then like puts the phone right in my face, and I was like. Oh, cool. Like, no big deal. <laughs> awesome. So it was very awkward, but very awesome at the same time. That's awesome. Did I you camp Vinny it Vinny out? Or? We did not. Okay. So oh, we yeah. just went for one day. Okay. I went yeah. for one night, and we drove back at, like, 2 a.m. Yeah. Whew. I don't think I could camp that thing out. I don't think I could either. I feel like people get flown all the time to go to the hospital from that because it's so hot. <laughs> and, you know, people are, like, drinking or doing, you know, drugs, so. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just that? things that I hear. I don't. Have you been going to this undercover? I've never been to Bonnaroo. <laughs> I just strictly go to CMAS. <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of the normal people wow. go. Wow. <laughs> wow. But anyways, that's really exciting. Yes. Um, CMA this is our fourth year. Okay. Okay. Um, fourth year. This will be our fourth year. Okay. This will okay. be our fourth year. Um, and. Luckily, they keep asking us back, so we're happy for that. Doing and something good. The stages keep getting bigger and better, so, so they we're keep really adding excited. more too. They do. Yeah, they yeah. do. That's so awesome. The festival's growing. It's awesome. Country music is the only genre that has something like this that is so interactive with the fans, mm-hmm. and it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Everybody's in one city. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hearing, discovering new artists, hearing the artists that they love. We get to meet. People, so which fans. is awesome. We do a, uh, everybody does a signing at the CMA booth as well. We get to meet so many people from all over the world. Um, and I really love CMA Fest because it's, it's so, it's, it's like a big country music family. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be awesome. Courtney and I are doing our first events this year. Yes. Awesome. We what are, are y'all doing? So we're hosting a live podcast. Okay. I just love coffee on Demumbrian. Okay. We have, awesome. Like Julia Cole, Louis, Louis Bryce. Bryce. John Gurney, John Gurney yeah. and the Rebel Roads. The Rebel Roads. Okay. And that has the guy from Second Hand yeah, yeah. Serenade. Second Hand Serenade. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. And then they're playing that, and then we are going to Tin Roof and Ferranti and Taylor Phillips. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we're going to do live podcasts and giveaways there. Awesome. So we've been going as fans, and now we're going to try doing the whole That is awesome. Hosting well, congratulations. Thing. That's Thank a big you. step. I might cry. So I used to cry giving speeches in high school. Don't cry. <laughs> It's okay. Like, my class had 11 kids in it since kindergarten. I started crying like my sophomore year when I'd stand up in front of them. Really? <laughs> you, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Your senior right? class had 11 students? <laughs> yes. And I would cry giving speeches. In Champaign? I'm, so I'm from like a small town like 45 minutes north. Where is it? Crescent City. Okay. So if you're driving, the exit's Gilman, Illinois. Okay. But I'm from a town called Crescent City. We had Do you know kids. where Buckley is? Yeah, so we used to play PBL. <laughs> Pax and Buckley Love. <laughs> How did you know that? <laughs> Oh, Did you Buckley play this? We never played Buck- Buckley. Um, but I think we were playing Champagne and driving up to Chicago. Is that, yeah, would that'd that be, right. be the right 57. trajectory? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and we passed um. Rogers Buckley. <laughs> um, and so I don't know why, but I got it in my head that I was going to start introducing my bassist as Buckley Rogers. Because I thought that was What's hilarious. <laughs> and so for literally a year and a half, maybe, every show we played, I would pick a small town around where we were playing. Um, like if we were playing in Champaign, I'd say, from Crescent City. 
on the bass guitar. And they'd all be like, Buckley what? Rogers. <laughs> and people would eat it up. Oh, yeah. And he felt so awkward for the first, like, maybe month, but then kind of got into it. But people would come up and ask him. They'd be like, oh, my God, you're from Crescent City? We're, like... I went to he's this high school and this and stuff, he's like, and he has no idea oh, where I guy. just said this guy no. was from. Um, and so one time, so he finally, but after after a while, he'd be like, "Oh yeah, I he like made a story. Oh, yeah. I just went to, you know, lived there for a year, and my parents moved there, or my parents live there now, so I'm not really from there." Or, all these stories, but so you don't tell Buckley them. Buckley Rogers. No, no, I don't tell they anybody. They picked up on it so, though eventually. No, they so they would oh, think they he's s- from. No, 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 I mean like your band. Oh, the band knew. They picked it was up like on an it inside eventually, joke. but like before you just started this oh, yeah. thing. Because we passed Rogers that's Buckley, great. it was the exit. Rogers Buckley, <laughs> and I was like, "That's a pretty funny name." Pretty good, Buckley name. Rogers. <laughs> so I would introduce him as Buckley Rogers. You should probably name your first kid Buckley. Rogers. Buckley Rogers. There you go, yeah. <laughs> son. This is why we named you this. Yep. And it was it was a long, it was a, it was a joke that went on for a while. Uh, you should bring it back. I, I think we yeah. should. Yeah. But he's not with us anymore. So well, he's with us alive, but he's not with the <laughs> band anymore. Um, I was like, that's he depressing. went and played with, with Brandon Lay. So okay, he's, okay, yeah. Gosh. So um, but yeah. So I, I I can't pass the name on. I I just it'd be it's it'd a be sacred wrong. name. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> do we have any more segments? Wow, wow. <laughs> yes. Well, do you want to play us one more song? Sure. What are you going to play us? I'll play you Man Enough Now. <laughs> okay, because that's what I wanted you to play. Yeah, all right. Because all yeah. the segments come after you play that song. Okay. So you were just waiting for me to play? <laughs> yeah. I can stay all night. Let's just let's just hang out. Let's have so a powwow. If you would have said you weren't playing that song, I would have been like, We'll grab oh, the no. tequila from the liquor store and we'll just be here all night. Oh, man. Awesome. Yeah, so... This was one of the first songs that I wrote with Jason uh, Massey and another friend of mine, Jason Duke. And I uh, I had this idea thinking about a previous relationship that I was pretty dumb in. And when I moved to town, people said, you know, I, I grew up in St. Louis, so we didn't have, we didn't ride around on back roads or mm-hmm. do much of that. Or we had bonfires and stuff, but it wasn't like a every night, every weekend type of things. And we had a little more concrete than we did dirt roads and Mm -hmm. people wore a lot more nikes than they did cowboy boots so (laughs) when i moved to town and i was trying to chase you know and i love the bro country stuff but that's the stuff that i was right when i moved to town because that was what was in Mm -hmm. and everybody was doing it and i was trying to chase chase that and how many truck songs did you write i've we've got I (laughs) i got a few i got a few um but mostly the the drinking and the you know, solo cups and solo cup. that little cut off shorts, the cut off shorts and, <laughs> and bikini tops and and that kind of stuff. And which they aren't all bad. They aren't I all bad. To they aren't yeah. all bad. And I I love the music. I love the artists that that sing them. Um, and some of the songs are pretty pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are. But somebody told me they were like, you know, you didn't grow up really doing a lot of that stuff. So what, like, write songs. That, about things yeah. that you know about. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always say this in my shows, one of the things that I know best is how to be a dumbass when it comes to relationships. So I've got mm-hmm. quite a few songs about that. And I think everybody, <laughs> every guy does as well. Yeah. Um, and everybody's been in good relationships. Everybody's been in bad relationships. So um, it's something that you know a lot of people can relate to as well. But I, I was thinking about a, a previous relationship that I was in and um, when I was young and dumb and and realized that, you know, I wasn't man enough to be in that relationship at that time. But if it were to happen now, would we still be together because I'm man enough for a relationship now? And I brought that title into uh, to the Jasons and, and they loved it and we went with it. And it took us like 30 minutes to decide whether we wanted to say shit in the chorus or not. Oh, and ultimately no. we decided that we were we were going to and like push it. boundaries like a little it. bit. Yeah. And, yeah, so so this is our, our shit song. It's not a shit song. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great song. Yeah, I was scared. I wasn't quite ready yet. Didn't want to let my freedom get too far away. So I would say anything. 
keep you just close enough Like I need a little space to breathe A little time for me to think I just need you to wait for me Wish you weren't waiting for me To grow up, get my shit together Stop giving you the run around, running from forever It's too bad, happened when we did Cause I've learned a lot about life since then Trying to figure it out Because I'm man enough now I guess it's something every boy's got to do Getting so close but letting it slip through Your fingers, yeah, you gotta learn the hard way Start to look back on all the things that you shoulda, woulda, coulda done. Bet you never thought that I would grow up, get my shit together, stop giving you the run around, running from forever. It's too bad, happened when we did, cause I've learned a lot about life since then. I can't go back, and girl, I hate that. You fell in love with the kid trying to figure it out. Cause I'm man enough to push my pride out of the way To make a girl like you wanna stay It took a while for me to come around But I am man enough now I grew up, I got it all together I stopped running from forever It's too bad Happened when we did Cause I've learned a lot about life since then I can't go back And girl, I hate that You fell in love with the kid Trying to figure it out So if one more chance Is something that you ever think about I'm man enough now Thank you very much. I also love your music video for that song. Yeah. Done really well. Thank you so much. That was a buddy of mine, Dustin and I. We um, t- tried to make it as financially responsibly <laughs> as we could. Um, so we went out and rented an Airbnb in Gatlinburg. And before we put it out, kind of like this year, it just rained. And every day that we wanted to go out there, we looked at the forecast and it was going to be rainy. So we decided that we were just going to book a day. If it rained, it rained. If it didn't, great. So we went out there, um, got a creepy Airbnb, um, (laughs) and stayed the night and we got out there. And I didn't know this at the time, but apparently it's... Illegal to fly a drone in a national park. Oh, and you did. <laughs> Cops are going to be coming for you. And we did. I think the statute of limitations may be up by now. There's my confession. <laughs> we have those, so um, a lot left to do. <laughs> but, um, but we got some amazing shots. Shot that in one day and did it for, you know, a very, as, um, like I said, cost efficiently as we could. Yeah. Um, and it didn't cost great. a lot of money, which was amazing. And it just goes to show that you don't need a huge budget and, you know, a lot of high tech yeah. stuff to to um, to make a music video and, and have it do well. And, yeah, just one day we borrowed his girlfriend's sister's Jeep, drove it so out there. <laughs> and Yeah, we had we had so we were just asking favors Sister's and just girlfriend's grandma's exactly just trying to trying to get it done and. And see what we could do because we didn't know what the song was going to do. I just knew that I wanted a music video. Yeah. And so I had the idea and Dustin and I got together and and um, wrote out the treatment. And, and uh, I think he did a great job directing it. And it was just he and I and, and his girlfriend came and, and uh, fil- drove him during the driving oh, yeah. scenes. <laughs> drove him in the bat- bed of a truck. And uh, 
yeah, we got it done. And, and I think it's, which is crazy. It's, I didn't think anybody would see it. And it's like 2 million, 3 million views on YouTube now. So yeah. it's been, That's awesome. it's been awesome. Yeah. It has been crazy. Completely so, blew my mind. Yeah. We have a speed round for you. Speed round. Uh-oh. Okay, Courtney and I are going to ask you questions. Okay. Okay. Are you man? So the thing is with man. <laughs> Explain that okay. first. So here are some things I've deemed manly. Okay. Okay. And you have to tell me if you're man enough. So, like, for example, a lumberjack. <laughs> you can read this. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? Yeah, read what I wrote okay. there. <laughs> Jenna writes, for example, a lumberjack driving a monster truck through an explosion would be the manliest thing ever. That's so, pretty true. Well, here are our questions. Here that we is go. pretty true. Here we go. You go first. I'll go first. You go first. Are you man enough for a beard? <laughs> Clearly. For a beard? Yeah, I think so. He has a beard. Everyone, no one can see him, but he has a beard. So he's man enough for a beard. Blame James Dean and Indiana Jones for this one. Are you man enough for a leather jacket? I have a leather jacket in my head, yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> are you man enough to build something? Um, mm, hesitation. I, well, no, I like. <laughs> I don't know if I could build a treehouse, but we. Uh, I just built stage boxes for the stage that light up when you step on them. Oh, okay. So oh, that was are. pretty cool. You are man enough to build something. Yeah. Okay. I can build things from IKEA as well. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. There we I'm go. Man enough. There you go. Um, are you man enough for cigars? I do enjoy a cigar from time to time. Okay, okay. I'm not the okay. one that goes out and smokes them every night, but just on on rare occasions. Okay. Okay. Are you man enough to drink straight whiskey? I do enjoy straight whiskey. Okay. I drink straight tequila. <laughs> Are you... <laughs> Seriously? Are you man enough to play That's guitar? So Duh. But are you man enough to write a love song for your girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, what a man. Yeah. I mean, I've got a few of those. Are you man enough for a tattoo? No, I get <laughs> I have, I have a few what of those as well. What tattoos do you have? So I have a Bruce Springsteen lyric in my mom's handwriting. Okay. And then I have a saying that my dad used to always say to me in my dad's handwriting. Be a gentleman, is that what it says? Be a gentleman. Yep. Because he's man. I like so he, uh, You're man enough. You're man enough. I be like a gentleman. Yeah, so my dad, whenever <laughs> I would get out of the car, whenever he'd drop me off at the movie theater or at a friend's house or even when we get off the phone today, he always just says, be a gentleman. Be gentleman. So Every thought, single time. That's a great advice. Uh, I'd say 90% of the time. Wow. Really Every time advice. when I was growing up and getting out of the car, yes. Aw, that's sweet. Last now, whether I listened or not <laughs> is a different story. Yeah, I didn't listen much either. Uh, last question. Are you man enough to go on a hunt? <laughs> on a hunt? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's all we got. He's yeah. man enough, everybody. You're man enough. I, there we go. You said yes like five to all for five. There we go. So here's four. <laughs> Look at You're that. You're basically as manly as a lumberjack driving a monster truck through an explosion. So I don't know if you knew this, but there's a spot in <laughs> East Nashville called Battle yes, you know, like, where you can throw axes. Hey, I know I this. Go there. I would love to go there. That'd be I'm, legit. I would be kind of I don't of know if it's like, open yet. It is. Is it, it is, open? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I've seen a few people go I there. I need to try that. No, yeah. Yes. I feel like I'd be worried, though, if I threw it, like, because you have to, like, throw it backwards, right? And then... Courtney would be the one to let it go behind her. You don't her. throw it backwards. <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, like, you, like, start it off. I don't know. I'll have to practice that Okay. One. So we're winding down on time, so we're just going to go right into off-the-record confessions. So everyone needs to confess something. I feel like he already confessed something. A little bit. This is off-the-record, Chris. Off-the-record. Um, you can tell us your deepest, darkest secrets. Oh, my goodness. So... It was three years ago. <laughs> no, um, I'll, I'll admit something that, that so gets, get dark, me, gets me in a lot of fights on the road. Okay. I don't like Chick-fil-A. I've That's only, my confession. I've only eaten there like three times my whole life. I don't life. like Chick-fil-A. I'm sorry. So you never go to Chick-fil-A. What's your go-to on the road? Panera? I don't like Panera either. Panera's wow, too no, expensive. We're not friends. They're they're real proud of their stuff. I love traveling I got a with someone salad who and likes a coffee for like seventeen bucks. I love traveling with someone who likes Panera because I'm like we're gonna eat healthy. We're not having McDonald's on the road. Great, let's have Panera. Well, you don't have to. You can go to other places and eat healthy. Well, you just rule that Chick Fil A and Panera. Panda Express. <laughs> that is not healthy. I'm joking. <laughs> I do love Panda Express though. I'm a little um, upset with you, Chris. My go to on the road. Um, I don't know. Ar- uh, Arby's is good. I, I don't eat healthy on the road. Sounds terrible. I do not eat healthy on the road. Um, Hunt's Pizza. <laughs> I'm scolding him right now because he doesn't like Chick-fil-A. I don't like Chick-fil-A or LaCroix. All right. Oh, 
Well, I mean, that's that's here yeah. or there. I yeah. mean, a lot of people don't like it, so. Yeah. So but how do you hate Jake Boy? That's a good confession. That is a good confession. Yeah. I was also with Casey when he passed out in the uh, <laughs> in the construction home. I wasn't with him. But technically. you were a part of. I, the I was a part of the day. <laughs> Anyways, um, you want me to go? Yeah, I'm not sure. Know. I don't know what I want to confess. Oh, yet, okay. So. I will confess that when we were at your show at Exit Inn, I fangirled so hard. Because, only because, I just got so excited because I was like, I just watched you perform and I was like, he is incredible. Like, what the heck? And then you like walked up. I think you were starting to like go say hi to Jer. And I was like, I, <laughs> Jenna did it too, but I'm just going to confess it was me. But I looked at her and we we're like, oh, he's going to come say hi to us. <laughs> and your girlfriend was right there. And I was like. Oh, God, I hope she didn't hear us just, like, sit there and freak out if he was going to come say hi. Did I say hi? No. No. Oh, okay. oh I'm okay. so sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Next time I will, though, because now well, we've officially met. Yes. 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 Now I, feel like... I was like, he doesn't know us. Why would he come say hi to us? <laughs> Next time I will, I promise. Yeah. Okay. That was a confession for both of us. No. That is... no. I scoured for hours for a confession. So um, I didn't know I what to say, so you got to come up with something. Wow, I have a rough... I'm putting I, you on the spot I now. Rough, I had a rough week last week, so I have a lot to confess. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just really don't want on the record. Okay, um... What are you trying to confess right now? What happened on the weekend, <laughs> or...? You know... What? No, not no. trying to confess that. <laughs> Don't it's all right. Name. We'll let it slide. Yeah, yeah. But I do have another fun one. And I okay. will confess this. So Instagram just added a mute button. I saw that. Everyone needs to confess who they want to mute right now. Ooh. What does that I'll mean? I'll tell you guys. Mute? And you guys will find this funny, maybe, or not. So this will be up. This is where. So mute. So, like, on Facebook, you can hide people from your timeline so you don't see their shit. And on Instagram, now you can mute people. You used to not be able to mute them. So if you mute them, they won't come up on your feed. Oh. So you want to, guys, want to know who I would mute? Who would you mute? Casey Edgar. <laughs> Why? Jenna Heidemann. That is so rude. <laughs> I, <laughs> he doesn't post that much. He oh, doesn't. He does. But I tell him all the time, I say, Casey, I always see your stories and I always comment and like your things, but you never like mine. Because you unfollowed me. And he's like, I didn't unfollow me. I think you unfollowed me and that's why we're not friends anymore. Can I tell you the whole back end story of this? So, so, there, like, that's, was, so that's I, why. I started I would to become friends with him because I would slide into his DMs. Okay, I, I heard would... you slide into DMs. <laughs> <laughs> not badly, but. At a wedding? Chris, also, right? hold up, hold up. Have you noticed I've been creepily commenting on your pictures all week waiting for you to come on this podcast? No. Well, I have. I've been saying like, really creepy things on all your pictures. No, from, I have from not. From the Inside the Noise account. And I'm like, people are like, who runs this account and who is behind she this? She showed me one of them and I was like, please You were like waiting on the right. I was like, waiting on you. Yeah, I was like, please don't freak him out. Oh, speaking of Casey, there he is. No, I don't want to see him. I'm muting him. He's muted. Um, I'm done. I'm done. He's okay, muted. Okay, listen, listen. So, I don't know what it... Oh, That's why you just got new Casey photos younger. taken. Like Casey you did? did, yes. Okay. And so, <laughs> one of the pictures I found, like, his photographer... It's long story. It's your... Wait. Dustin? Yeah, it's your video guy. So... He, he did Joey's video. I... Yes. No, pictures. Oh. His photos. Of him? No, Casey's. Oh. So, I was sitting there creeping on his... I started to do, like, what Jenna did with yours. I would do, like... <laughs> Funny pickup lines. So his last one, wait, where is it? It's right here. But he was like, Courtney, seriously? I said, are you a parking ticket because you've got fine written all over you? That's a good one. <laughs> but Did trying- you have to Google that? <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, still good though. And he goes, oh my God, you would. But anyways, that's how I started to weirdly become friends with him because Jenna, t- like I met him one time and then Jenna like, mentioned him to me and then I would just see his Instagram Wait, so you were doing stories. this before you even knew him? <laughs> okay. And I get I, I would used to sit there all I would say was yo boy where you at? And that was it. Yeah every time. Like, what are you doing? I'm all like right. where's but, Casey at? So I need you guys to confess who you would mute to. See I don't You don't follow people you don't want to see. Yeah. Them. Everybody that I follow I, I know for okay. the most part. That's um, smart. Other I don't know you might meet John my Mayer com- or You might meet my comments. <laughs> What did you write waiting on you? Yeah, he's like waiting on the rain, like so waiting now on that you. you. Now that you said that, <laughs> I did see that. I thought it was Alan, though. Alan's <laughs> even creepier. 
So that I thought it was it Alan. Better. And, but I could see Alan saying that. So I was like, all right. Okay. I think it was Sunday night she showed that to me. She was like, look what I'm writing to Chris. And I said, can you not freak him out before he gets on here? <laughs> I thought it was. I, so That makes it so much I better, though. I wanted to yes. on it. I love I it. wanted to comment more than, like, he's going to figure it out sometime <laughs> soon. He's going to be like, hey, I'm not showing up on Thursday. And I was like, great. There goes another one. <laughs> Do you have a lot of cancel mm. We've had a couple. Really? <laughs> We're not going to bring it up, though. No. Really? Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> we that, haven't. We haven't any real cancels. Okay. I was going to say, that that would make me so mad. It was mad. a mishap. Okay. It was a mishap, yes. That yes. would make me so mad because yes. y'all take the time to get it all set up but and I ready. Do get, and... I do get nervous. Like, if someone doesn't respond to the email, I get, I get anxiety. I'm like, they're not going to show up. <laughs> I no, you were good. I apologize good. for my, my lack of text. You were text. good because I was like, I'm going to confirm him. Three days early because we confirmed this so far out. <laughs> so I am very sorry on the the lack of of communication on the text. I will admit I'm, when I found out what that we were gonna have you on the podcast, I was driving to Louisville for a wedding, and I was texting Jenna. I was like, "I'm gonna listen to a song right now," and I jammed out to Man. Well, thank now. you so much. I'm like, yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was like a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna wrap this up now. No. Nope. Wait, who would you mute? Oh yeah, who would you mute? Oh, I don't know. I like who I follow, too. Yeah, see, I... I oh, guys, I'm the only one that would meet Casey Edgar. <laughs> Thanks for not being on so my mean. team. <laughs> I'm just... I'm always bitter with him because I feel like he doesn't follow me. Because here's the thing. We were friends for, like, almost a year, and then all of a sudden I got this notification that Casey Edgar is following you on Instagram. <laughs> I said, you have been following me. So I, I made me... So I follow, like, men's health or... Some things you like that. You might meet one of them. Mm-hmm. And I might meet one of them because sometimes, like, I'll be in line at a store and it'll be, like, a guy with a six-pack and, <laughs> like, with a shirt off. And I'm like, oh, this is awkward. Mm. Scroll, <laughs> scroll, scroll. <laughs> like, what um, if someone was behind you? Yeah, like, like looking, that looking like, at? Why is he looking at? That is true. There are moments where I follow, like, fitness women and they're, like, in their bikinis and I'm at the airport and I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, I can't have someone think that I'm looking at naked it, yeah. chicks. That's weird. All right, yeah. great way to sign off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys. Oh, okay, wait, wait. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Saved by the bell. Notification. Okay, okay. So, everyone, where do you want to follow Chris? <laughs> oh, you can follow me on. <laughs> so, <laughs> check us out on uh, chrisbandy.com or all the socials chrisbandy, um, C H R I S B A N D I. No R. No R. Okay, N-D-I. Um, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, we got it all. Yeah, MySpace so, still? Nah, probably not. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> we'll so. We'll find some good photos you of you. Know, SoundCloud. Oh yeah. Yeah, all the all the above. Okay. But I don't post on a lot of the stuff. Um, I post on Instagram. I try to, I try to post on Instagram often, but there's sometimes where I just go weeks without posting anything, and I feel really bad. I'm like, oh. I need a yeah, picture. Yeah, I know. And then I, I found out you a got picture. a haircut. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! When I, when I say waiting on you. Good comeback. Good comeback. <laughs> All right. And make sure you listen and subscribe on iTunes to Inside the Noise. And now there is no more noise. This has been Jenna. And Thank Courtney. you so much for having me. <laughs> and Chris Bandy. Thank you so much for having me. And we're done. And we're done.